Hi guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Lasite and I'm a fourth year medical student currently studying at General Sir John Kotelao Defence University in Sri Lanka. So this video is for all of those international students out there who are thinking of studying medicine at KDU in Sri Lanka. Now KDU is not, uh, even though it's globally recognized, not a lot of people know about KDU, especially me coming from Europe, living in the UK, I had no idea about KDU, never had that uh, name before. My parents introduced me to this university and they also had it from some other family friends. And that's how we came to know about KDU. So uh, there isn't a lot of information, like I said, out there. So I wanted to make this video to tell you a little bit about KDU, how to gain admission, the course structure, and how a little bit about the medical, uh, medical student life at KDU. So let's start by telling you guys a little bit about KDU. KDU is a military university and it offers a lot of courses, not just medicine. It has engineering, there's law, there's business management, as well as many other courses. And it's divided into two campuses. One is um, within the Colombo city and the other one is the south end of the island. As a medical student, you will never have to go to the south end uh, campus of uh, the university will always be located within the Colombo city. Now there are two populations of students at KDU. One population are the cadets and the other ones are the day scholars, the private students. So you as an international student will be applying as a uh, day scholar not as a cadet. Cadet are those that are local students that if they wish to study KDU they have to join the forces and then uh, study uh, together with the private students at KDU. As an uh, international student, as you're applying to KDU, you need to have set A-levels uh, in sciences and maths. Or um, if you're coming from a different country like Australia, they'll have their own different examinations. So you guys can sit those exams and then what you can do is just to compare those and get a uh, translation basically of those exams uh, to an A-level classification. KDU requires uh, three Bs. That's usually uh, the requirement that they have for any students who want to study medicine. So that requirement for A-level. On top of that, you also need to show them that you have the financial capabilities to pay for five years within KDU and the tuition fees currently stand at 12,500 American dollars per year. So you need to be able to show them that you have the right amount and that your parents make the right amount to pay for university for that period of time. So those are usually the requirements that they want. And there's one more rule to take into consideration because this has affected me when I applied to KDU and that's that your age, you have to be between 18 to 25. At the time when I applied, I believe it was between 18 to 21 and I, sorry, 20, 18 to 24. And I was 25 at the time uh, when I applied for first year. And they rejected me in the first time round and then eventually they came back to me and they said that they changed the rule and they moved it to 25 because at the time there were two students, one was myself and there was another student, another student who and we both were, one, he was 24, I was 25, so we didn't qualify at the time. So they changed the rule and got us, got us in. So that's that to consider as well. But generally, that's how you apply to uh, KDU. And there are a lot of information on their website and you can call the FRO, which is the Foreign Relation Officer, and you can get more information from him as well. Generally, the academic year for us starts from January all the way to December. And during that time, you're supposed to have uh, two months of holidays, one in the middle of the year, around May, June, and the other one in December. Uh, but generally this doesn't happen because there is uh, a lot of delays that happen throughout the year and other complications. So usually you get just the December vacation, but if you're lucky enough, you'll get both of them. 
Um, so that's a little bit about how to gain a place. So let's talk a little bit about the uniform. So it's not like other universities. Like I said, this is a military universities and there are regulations to follow. And one of them is the uniform. You have to wear a uniform. You'll have a white shirt with short sleeves, black trousers with a black belt, uh, black shoes, long black socks. And if you're a guy, you'll have to have short hair. You can't have a beard, you need to be shaved. If you're a girl, uh, you'll have to have a ponytail. You can't let your hair loose. You can have earrings, uh, you can have piercings, no nails. Um, yeah, no, um, you can't have long nails. You can polish them, you can um, put makeup on. So there are those things that you need to take into consideration. And one thing about uniform is that they are very strict on it. Um, there are certain things that you have to apply on your badge as well. Like uh, the KDU badge, there will be a name tag with your name on it. There are opal opalettes that sit on your shoulders and usually those opalettes will have bands which indicates the number of years that you've been a KDU. So if you have two bands, you're a second year. If you have four, you're a fourth year. And they have different colors. So for us as medical students, we have red, dark red bands. If you're a law student, you have purple bands and so on. And if your uniform is not ironed properly, or if you don't have the right socks, you're supposed to have long socks. You can't put the short ones because you, your ankles are seen you won't be allowed within the premises. So make sure that when you come, you have all the right equipment for your uniform. And the uniform is tidy, it's washed, it's ironed. Those are things that they look for. If you have, For guys, if you haven't shaved, you won't be in within the premises. You have to shave every single day. You can't shave every other day because they'll notice that. So you have to shave every day. You have to have short hair. So those are things that you need to take into consideration if you want to study at KDU. So that's a little bit about uh, uniform. Oh yes, and girls can't dye their hair either. So it has to be their natural color. So if you're Sri Lankan, obviously you have black hair, so you have to, you can't dye your hair any other color. Okay, and if you have piercings, uh, sorry, not piercings, tattoos, you have to, uh, for example, if you have tattoos all over your arm, you have to wear long sleeve shirts. You, you can't show your tattoos essentially. Okay, so that's a little bit about uniform. So let's talk a little about how to get into the premises. So our university is completely sealed from one end to the next. And there is only one gate at the front of the campus and all the students gain access from there. At the gate, there'll be guards and they'll be looking at your uniform, whether you have the right uniform, whether you have everything that you're required, like the opalettes, the KDU badge, your name tag. If you're missing any of those, you won't be in without, you know, they won't let you in within the premises. If you're late, you won't be in either. Uh, you can get KDU at any point from 7 o'clock to 7.45. 7.45 is the latest. If you come 7.46, 7.47, they won't let you in. So that's something that you need to take, again, into consideration and be mindful about that because if you come late, you won't be let in. Lessons start at 8 a.m. So within that time frame, you have to be within the premises. And if you want to leave, again, you, have to, you can leave after 2.15 in the afternoon. You can't leave at 1, you can't leave at 12, it has to be after 2.15. And that's something our students argue all the time with the guards on, on the seat right in front of the gate. The gates open only 2.15 and there is no point arguing with them. So just be mindful about that as well. 2.15 is the uh, earliest that you can leave. So if you, uh, if you finish at 12 o'clock, you have to find something to do within that time frame until 2.15 in order to leave the university. So that's a little bit about how to gain access to the university and, and get out. So let's talk a little bit about lecturers and professors. So obviously you get 
good lecturers and bad lecturers everywhere. You get lectures they can teach, lectures they can't teach, and that's everywhere, not just in Sri Lanka, it's any university um, within the globe. So it's the same thing here at KDU, there's some really good lecturers, others that maybe are not able to teach, or others that are really nice, others that are very strict. So you'll get a mix of lectures and you need to be able to cope with that. There's nothing much that you can do there. But one thing that I need to stress on is that teachers here are generally very passionate about teaching and they'll make sure that you pass your exams. So let's say for instance, and we'll talk about examination in a bit uh, properly, but Essentially what happens is if you fail an exam, let's say out of 80 students, 10 people fail their exams, they'll make sure that those 10 get the uh, proper revision in order to pass the second time round. And usually what they do is our academic time is from 8 a.m. to 4 a.m. So during that time, obviously they can't uh, put on revision sessions just for the students who have failed. But after that scheduled time, from uh, 4 p.m., maybe sometimes they schedule lectures at 8 p.m., you, as a medical student, you have to attend those revision sessions in order to study for the, those exams. And you don't get a say, you don't, you, you don't get to say no, or you, you cannot not attend those revision sessions. You have to be there. You can't say no to a lecturer who's taking out their own time in order to teach you. So you need to be grateful for that, you need to recognize that, and you need to be present. And we'll talk about how lectures work and what are the requirements to for lectures uh, in a little bit. So, and one more thing that I wanted to say here is, so uh, that the lectures follow a hierarchy system. Uh, you'll get professors, lectures, demonstrators, and finally at the bottom tier, medical students. So it's the same thing in the clinical settings. From third year onwards, when you start clinicals, you get consultants, you get registrars, SHO, HOs, and finally medical students. So what I'm trying to say here with this hierarchical system is that there are occasions where maybe um, you're not happy with what your consultant or your lecturer is saying to you. Uh, maybe you have a different opinion on things. My advice for you guys is don't argue back. Keep it for yourself. Take in whatever it is that they're saying and let it be as it is. Because if you reply back and it doesn't go, it's not really appreciated by them, you might end up in with some serious consequences. So to avoid that, one thing that you need to learn here in Sri Lanka is that you take it in and you suck it up. That's something that you have to do. Uh, for me, as a UK medical, uh, as a UK student, I, I mean, I started, did a biomedical science degree and a master's over there. So I'm very used to that sort of environment where if I'm not agreeing with something, I can be vocal about it and express my own opinions and make sure that it gets done the right way according to my preferences, it's not according to their preferences. But that's not how it works here. So it's all based on their preferences and how they like to get things done. And we just need to do it on according to their preferences. Okay. So that's something a little bit about lectures and professors, but generally they're very nice. They're very passionate about teaching. So you'll have a good time. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about course structure. Um, our course is divided into three phases. We have the preclinical phase, paraclinical phase, and clinical phase. So within these three phases, you'll be studying 14 subjects. Uh, during first and second year, you'll be doing anatomy, uh, biochemistry, and physiology. During um, the second phase, Paraclinical phase, you'll be studying six subjects, microbiology, parasitology, pharmacology, pathology, forensics, and uh, public health and family medicine. And then during the last phase, you'll be doing five subjects, um, surgery, medicine, pediatrics, obstetrics, and psychiatry. So I'm not going to tell you in detail what's going to happen uh, every single year, but essentially those are the three phases. At the end of each phase, you get a set 
of final exams. So at the end of para, at the paraclinical phase, which is uh, towards the end of second year, you'll have to see your first three exams and that's called the second MBBS exam. Then you'll have the third MBBS exam, which is separated into two exams. Um, the first one is called the third MBBS exam part one and the uh, second one is called part two, third MBBS exam part two. During part one, you'll only be doing bio uh, microbiology and parasitology. And uh, for part two, you'll be doing the other four subjects. And then at the end of the clinical phase on fifth year, you'll be seeing those five subjects that I told you guys about earlier. The exams, um, so if you take the preclinical phase, during preclinical phase, you have CAT exams, which you also get in the other two phases as well. But um, so I, let's say that you're a first year student starting uh, in January. After six months, which is the uh, how basically uh, long is uh, the first semester, you'll get a CAT exam called the CAT 1 exam, which is a continuous assessment. And that usually what between uh, four to five percent. And then you get another CAT exam at the end of first year. So like that, uh, for anatomy, you get three CAT exams. For biochemistry and for physiology, you get two CAT exams. And at the end of uh, your second, towards the end of your second year, when you're supposed to write down the second MBS exam, you'll have about 10% of uh, marks that you'll be carrying on towards your final exam. So if anatomy, 10% from the three CAT exams that you'll be writing, 90% from your final exam. If it's physiology, physiology works a little bit differently. You get 20% from your CAT exams and 80% from your final. Biochemistry, same as anatomy. 10% from your CAT exams, 90% from your final exam. Now these exams can be, uh, for, for your second MBBS exam, you can sit it twice in a year. So let's say you're in second year now, towards the end, around let's say September time, uh, actually August, that's when you'll be sitting the second MBS exam. A month later, you'll get your results. And if you failed, you haven't managed to pass uh, certain subjects, you'll have to retake those. And they usually give you six weeks from the date when your results will be released to the next uh, date to write those exams again. So if you don't pass the second time round as well, you'll be relegated, which means that you'll have to sit the second year again. So you'll have to pay another $12,500 American dollars and you'll have to sit the second year again. But if you manage to pass the second time around, then you can move on with the rest of your batch towards third year. Now, each exam can be set up to four times. So that means if you're a second year student and you have failed the second time around, you'll have to sit uh, second year again and you get two more chances to pass the, the, those exams. If you don't pass by the fourth attempt, then you'll have to leave KDU or to go to study medicine somewhere else, or KDU will give you uh, the chance to study for a different course. But if you're within the clinical settings, you don't have this rule that after the second attempt, you have to retake the year you are allowed to move to the next following year, but during that time, while you're studying for your fourth year subjects, you'll have to sit the uh, exams that you fail as well. So let's take microbiology as an example. If you fail microbiology twice during your third year, because microbiology, like I said earlier, will be studied and set during third year. So if it's August and you don't manage to pass microbiology, you get again another attempt six weeks later. And if you fail again, you can move on to fourth year and you get two more attempts the next following August and the next following November to sit those exams. Again, if you don't pass by the fourth attempt, you'll have to leave the course and you can either go somewhere else to study medicine or join a different course. 
So that's how usually exams work. There are a few more rules, obviously, but I'm not going to mention everything in this video, but those are the most important things that you need to take into consideration. And if you look on the KDU website, there's something, there's something called the abstract book. You can look at that book and it tells you all of this information that I just told you about. Okay, and it gives you a proper uh, breakdown of all the CAT exams and all the different things that you need to do for your final exams because final exams are divided into different sections. You get multiple choice questions, you get short essay questions, auspice, viva. So there are different things that uh, are included in the short in the final exam. Well, obviously, I'm not going to talk at all about all of that in this video so that's something for you guys to look at maybe i'll drop down a link to that abstract book uh, within the description of this video um so then a uh, few more words about lectures now lectures uh, like i said uh, so if you are a first year and second year student they start 8 a.m and they finish at 4 4 a.m in the afternoon and during that time, you'll be doing different things. It's not just lectures, it's not all presentations. You'll have practicals, you'll be doing dissections if it's anatomy. And one thing to uh, take here is that um, lectures are usually um, uh, get scheduled. At the, at the end of each Friday, you'll get a, a um, timetable that will give you everything that happens throughout that week. But one thing to take into consideration here about timetables at KDU is that they change all the time. Sometimes we had changes every single day for that particular week because there are a lot of lectures that get uh, scheduled and they get canceled because lecture lecturers have a lot of um, administrative work or if it's a consultant, they have to see patients, during that time so those lectures don't get prioritized therefore they get cancelled um, and that's quite a new thing for me as well because me coming from the UK as a biomedical science student I never had this problem in my three years at King's College I never had a single lecture cancelled actually there is a lot because we had one cancellation once during December time it was snowing very heavily in London Therefore, our uh, lecturer, were, lecturer was unable to come to the university to teach us. My sister is also a medical student, fifth year medical student at Imperial College, and she doesn't, she never had a cancellation during those five years. So I don't know why this happens here in Sri Lanka that often, but it happens. Um, so a little few words about sports and societies. Um, we have a lot of different sports at KDU, cricket, f um, basketball, volleyball, swimming and each year we have sports meets which are basically competitions where faculties can uh, challenge the other faculties so that's something that happens every single year. As a first year and second year medical student you get to uh, get involved in that get involved in sports activities and societies you get to go to events things like that so that's uh, open to everyone and you have time to do that as a third year 40 and 50 year medical student you don't get that much time so it's different for us uh, so we don't get that much time to get involved in sports and activities and um, because usually those activities happens uh, from four from 4 p.m onwards and as a clinical medical student from third year, 14, 15 year, you don't get that much time to get involved during those activities. Uh, but like I said, there are a lot of activities and things that you can get involved and KDU promotes uh, their, their activities because they want their students to be active and healthy. So they'll make sure that you guys get involved in those things as well. But like I said, from third year onwards, you get very little time to get involved in these things. So I would uh, advise you guys, if you want to be uh, involved in some sports activities, try to do that as much as you can during first year and second year. And one thing I forgot to mention about lectures uh, for clinical settings 
the way it works is for us is that we have uh, clinicals from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. and then from 1.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. we have uh, lectures and that's from Monday to Friday. Now having said that there are days where you have to go on Saturdays and Sundays but it's just to the hospitals. Clinicals can start anywhere from 8 a.m. and they can finish late at night 8 p.m. 9 p.m. 10 11 12 and that's according to your uh, to your consultants. For example, when we started our third year, we had a very strict consultant who wanted us to come every single day. And we used to go, I remember that we used to go on Saturday and stay there from 8 a.m. until 12 p.m. Uh, until 12 a.m. actually, until midnight during those two days. So. It varies. There are some consultants that want us to say from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m., others until the, from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. Some others they might they say you don't have to come on Saturdays and Sundays. You can just do Monday to Friday. So it varies according to each consultants that you get, and you can't complain about it. It is the way it is. You just have to accept it, and you just have to follow whatever it is that they say. So that's usually how it works for third years to fifth years. And just a few more words about hostels and how hostels uh, works. So KDU has its own hostels. They call them hostels here. We, while we in the UK, we call them accommodations for students, but that's how it works here. And those are usually for people, for students who don't have a, uh, who don't have a house uh, within Colombo and it's majorly for girls it's um, because uh, parents basically want a safe place for their children to stay at and it's mostly for girls so you'll see that there are a lot of girls that stay in hostels uh, but all, obviously there are a lot of guys as well and you usually pay anywhere from I believe from 275 to $375 according to which uh, room you want, whether it's an AC room or it's a fan uh, or fan only room. So there are different cat uh, categories for that as well. Obviously, I'm not part of that, so I'm not able to tell you much about the hostel situation. But again, if you call the FRO, Foreign Relation Officer, uh, through the website, you can find their numbers and everything, you'll be able to know more information about. Uh, the hostel situation. So if you wish to live outside, like me, you can do that. I have a house within Colombo City, so which is very close to my university, so I'm able to go from home. Others who are not so fortunate, who live outside of Colombo, they get to stay at the um, KDU hostels, or otherwise you can find accommodation outside, uh, outside of the uh, KDU premises and there are plenty of accommodations and you'll get ads, advertisements everywhere. There are advertisements on online or around the campus and you can see and call those numbers and get to know more about the hostel situation. So this is, uh, yeah, so this is the video for today. So it's just a little bit of information for you guys, but if there's anything specific that you want to know about KDU, anything they haven't covered here just make sure to uh, give a uh, to drop a comment down below and i'll make sure to answer you guys as soon as possible bye for now